Many of the lodges, picnic shelters, dams, and trails found in state and federal parks across the U.S. were built eight decades ago by young men who were in many cases not even old enough to vote. They were members of the Civilian Conservation Corps and often referred to as the boys of the CCC. They were paid a dollar a day, $30 a month. A dollar back then was worth $20 a day. You could buy a dozen eggs for seven cents. New pair of shoes for a buck and a half, five gallons of gas for a dollar. So uh, it was actually a pretty fair deal. Three square meals a day, a lot of food. It was a big step up for a lot of guys. Bill Jamerson has spent a lot of time researching and interviewing the young men who were part of the federal conservation effort that stretched across the United States. He has written a book called Big Shoulders, produced the documentary Camp Forgotten, and performs on the CD Crazy Khaki Kids, which is a collection of songs he wrote about life in the Civilian Conservation Corps. I planted about 10,000 trees. I did it all on bended knees. Now we're on the road and weather bound. A lot of people become a little teary-eyed sometimes in my programs. These are heartfelt stories. Uh, abject poverty really brings families together. And people in my audience, anyone in their 70s or 80s, they know, they know how hard it was and what they struggled. And, and these stories uh, bring back memories. They bring back memories. In 1933, the United States was suffering through the Great Depression, a time when stocks lost 89% of their value and nearly one in four Americans were out of work. Many voters felt it was time for a new deal from a new president. Franklin Delano Roosevelt became that new president, and in his first month in office, he created a number of back-to-work programs known as the New Deal. Brother, can you spare a dime? The Civilian Conservation Corps, or CCC, was one of the first New Deal programs that made the federal government the employer of last resort. Times were rough, my dad had died, and my mother, I and my brother it was still at home, and uh, you couldn't find a job or anything, and we had lost the farm. With my dad had spent his lifetime saving up a little to buy a farm, and you need to eat money. My mother need to eat money. Only single men between the ages of 18 and 25, whose families were on relief, were eligible to join the Civilian Conservation Corps. A CCC boy received room and board, clothing, training, and a monthly paycheck of $30, 25 of which was sent home to his family. After inspecting Skyland, the Commander-in-Chief takes a seat at the head of the table to eat with the boys, and he enjoys every bite of the plain, wholesome food furnished at the camp. It's very good to be here at these Virginia CCC camps. I wish I could see them all over the country. I wish that I could take a couple of months off from the White House and come down here and live with them, because I know I'd get full of health the way they have. The only difference is that they've put on an average of about 12 pounds apiece since they got here, and I'm trying to take off 12 pounds. <laughs> Despite its name, the Civilian Conservation Corps was in many ways a military organization. U.S. Army officers commanded the camps. Even the equipment was military, with much of it, including the uniforms, being World War I surplus. A typical day in a CCC camp started with reveille at 6 a.m., followed by roll call, calisthenics, breakfast, and then clean up. At 8 a.m. sharp, the work began. They would take us down to a big area there where we all lined up, and the government would turn us over to the state for to go to work for the state. And it was all state work from then on, till 4 o'clock in the afternoon, then they turned you back over to the government again. The purpose of the CCC was to help the nation's human resources while simultaneously improving America's natural resources. The work of the Civilian Conservation Corps extended well beyond the many stone structures found in state parks today across the United States. 
often referred to as Roosevelt's Tree Army, the work of CCC boys extended to projects including reforestation, revitalization of overworked agricultural land, and preventing soil erosion. In fact, 75% of CCC work projects were administered by the Department of Agriculture. Besides fighting fires, erecting more than 3,000 fire towers and planting 3 billion trees, CCC boys constructed dams, built irrigation canals that provided essential water to western farms, and dug ditches that drained more than 84 million acres of agricultural land. We were in a soil conservation group and there was lots of shovel work involved. I think we had one little cat that, for, uh, that they could use for moving larger quantities or heavy rocks and stuff like that. But most of it was done by hand with picks and shovels. I grew up in a hurry, I can tell you that. During the Great Depression, the CCC provided economic relief to families by putting approximately three million young men to work. It gave the CCC boys the tools they would need to become successes later in life. And the CCC gave the nation improvements to natural and agricultural resources that are still visible across America's landscape 80 years later. I look at it now and it was probably the best thing that ever happened to us. Us young people then that didn't have a job and, and I think it was a good deal. I think Franklin Roosevelt knew what he was doing. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.